When we finish this video, I want us to be thinking more like an oral surgeon and less like a general practitioner. So what I mean is when a general practitioner sees infection in the mouth or some type of swelling, I think we're pretty quick sometimes to just prescribe antibiotics. Now, prescribing antibiotics is not the appropriate treatment for these situations where you have a necrotic tooth that's causing infection. It may be part of the solution in combination with the surgical intervention, but not antibiotics alone. So the typical approach might be to give someone a week's worth of a penicillin, have them back later because you feel that you can numb it up better and you're gonna be able to get the tooth out at that time. Meanwhile, you're just empirically kind of choosing an antibiotic, hoping it's gonna cover whatever the pathogen is, and you're hoping that isn't spreading to more serious spaces than the initial presentation. And it may, which will then require a lot more intervention down the road and a tougher experience for this patient. So the best thing to do and what an oral surgeon would do is say if we have a necrotic lower first molar here with a fluctuant swelling here on the buccal surface of the body of the mandible, they are going to look at that and they're going to say we need to remove this tooth today. And they will do it today by using blocks for anesthesia, getting the patient good and numb with distant anesthesia. And they're going to do an incision and drainage in combination with that and possibly possibly even antibiotics on top of all that, depending on the immune status and the health of the patient, the condition and the spaces involved uh, with the infection. So they have a much more aggressive approach and quite frankly, that is the standard of care that you should be taking in your practice as well. If you can't provide that or you're not willing to provide that, my suggestion would be that you should be sending these people out to the oral surgeons to get proper management. Now. If you're managing them with antibiotics, you know what, probably most times they would be fine, but there's going to be those cases that don't respond, they get to be more serious. When would we do an IND? So we need to kind of get this clear first because maybe that's the problem, maybe we don't know when we would do that. Well, two times that we would do it would be one, if we have a fluctuant swelling, so we can actually see and kind of tell that there's a big pocket of pus under the tissue. It'll look kind of yellow. It'll be all puffy in the cheek here, and the vestibule might be kind of obliterated here in this area. If we can see that and see the pus beneath the tissues, we want to be able to drain that away with an IND. The other time that you might do it is if you have a necrotic tooth and you have a cellulitis. So cellulitis is just that really red, hard tissue and it's just really, really inflamed but you don't really see any localized pockets of infection or, or an abscess under the gum that you could physically just poke into and drain that. So what you do is you still do your IND in combination with uh, removing the tooth. The reason is you want to kind of weaken the tissues in an area to allow any of that infection that may develop postoperatively to have a weak path here that is going to allow it to drain away, much like creating your own fistula that teeth will sometimes create on their own from having a chronic periapical abscess. When would we want to send someone to an oral surgeon? So I'm going to give you just a few tips as to quick things that you can identify that would say, eh, this is probably out of the realm of something that I want to be managing. This should be in the hands of someone a little bit more experienced. One indication for that would be if your patient comes in and they're complaining of any difficulty breathing or swallowing from an infection from a tooth. Now, that is a very serious issue because what that means is the infection is tracking posteriorly, starting to involve some of these maybe peripharyngeal spaces or involving the airway a little bit more than we would like to see. That's a serious place that needs to be managed fairly aggressively and promptly to make sure that it doesn't extend into something that's closing the airway, causing a life-threatening situation for your patient. Another time would be if you are having a patient in maybe with a swelling in the submandibular space and you can't palpate the inferior border of that mandible, things are quite puffy in under the jaw, maybe it's going to be bilateral in nature, that type of thing is another space that's a little bit more severe. So we're going to look at this in our infection section, but keep that in mind. Other thing would be if they have a fever over 101 degrees Fahrenheit or if you have a very immunocompromised patient. So say that they are someone who has had a history of alcohol abuse, corticosteroid usage, renal disease, uncontrolled diabetes, or maybe they're just very old or very malnourished. 
Now, the other thing would be if it's an extra oral IND, that for me would be a referral because I'm just not comfortable working outside of a patient's mouth. It might seem kind of weird, but that's not where I am for the majority of my day, and I don't like to venture outside of there. So I'm just not comfortable. So if you see extra oral swelling that looks like it needs an extra oral IND, then that for me would be a referral. It may be for you as well. Now, why are we doing an incision and drainage? Well, we're doing it first off to basically decompress the area. So when you get all this swelling in there, you're basically kind of cutting off the circulation, cutting off the blood supply, and you're not able to get any antibiotics or much of your host immunity in there to clear up that infection. So you're decompressing the area, and you're also improving the oxygenation and the vascularity to that region. Uh, so when you do that, you're kind of changing the anaerobic environment in there, which is going to kill off some of that bacteria that may be a little bit more virulent. When you drain away all the pus in there as well, you're basically decreasing the bacterial load and you're improving the pH of the tissues, which again is going to be healthier for your body and easier for your natural immune system to take over and get the infection cleared up. If you have a big ball of pus, imagine that you've got this big collection of pus and you give somebody antibiotics. So let's say this is the treatment of choice of GPs. You give them antibiotics. You try to get the antibiotics to the center of that abscess. How is that going to happen? There is little to no blood supply anywhere in there. It's just a collection of pus just festering in there with bacteria. The antibiotics are ineffective in these cases. They cannot penetrate into that to be effective. So it's important to drain that away to get better infiltration and penetration of your antibiotics.